فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد This قاعدة we're going to be speaking about in explanation of our kitab that we were doing الإصباح في بيان منهج السلفي في التربية والإصلاح we're now, inshallah ta'ala, going to carry on from the 45th qa'idah. The author, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, أَنَّهُمْ يَحْكُمُونَ عَلَى النَّاسِ بِمَا ظَهَرَ مِنْ أَعْمَالِهِمْ وَيَدْعُونَ وَيَدْعُونَ السَّرَائِرَ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ They judge the people based on what seems apparent from them. I mean, the things that come across to them from the apparent. I mean, we judge people by their apparent. And we leave Allah with their sara'ir. Sara'ir meaning the people's inner affairs, their intentions and their motives behind things. We leave that to Allah. But we judge people based on what? We judge people based on the apparent and what seems apparent to us. Allah says in the Quran, سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ لَكُمْ إِذَا قَلَبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ فَاعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسِ وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمُ جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ Allah says, سَيَحْلِفُونَ بِاللَّهِ They swear by Allah to you, Muhammad. إِذَا قَلَبْتُمْ إِلَيْهِمْ When you turn towards them, لِتُعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ So you can, they swear to Allah for you, so you can turn away from them. فَعْرِضُوا عَنْهُمْ Just turn away from them. إِنَّهُمْ رِجْسٌ They are filthy. وَمَأْوَاهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ And جَهَنَّمْ is their final abode. جَزَاءً بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And all of that is based on what they have earned and the efforts that they have put in. So what this ayah is saying is, they're swearing to you by Allah, just turn away from them. In other words, listen to them based on their souls the oath that they are making to you. But truly, they're filthy people. Because Allah knows what's in their hearts. But take them for what they are swearing by. Also in hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, and hadith Sahih Muslim, and hadith Umm al-Mu'minina, Umm Salama, radiyallahu ta'ala anha. These are the munafiqeen, by the way, that ayah. The Prophet said, إِنَّكُمْ تَخْتَصِمُونَ إِلَيَّ وَلَعَلَّ بَعْضَكُمْ أَنْ يَكُونَ أَلْحَنَ بِحُجَّتِهِ مِنْ بَعْضٍ the Messenger والسلام, he said, You guys, you debate and you argue in front of me. And you dispute one another in our affairs in front of me. And it is possible that some of you are that one of you is more eloquent in putting forward his argument than others. And I only judge based on what I hear. I mean, based on what I see, seem to be right. Anyone who I judge for him, his brother's rights, I give it to him. Don't take it. Because what I'm cutting for him is a portion of the fire. This is the statement of who? This is قول إمام الحكم وسيد ولد آدم. This is the statement of the master of judges, the master of the children of Adam, Nabi Allah Muhammad. So this shows you that we as individuals can only judge what we seem to see see to be right, and we can only judge on what we see to be wrong. We can't go into people's intentions. So we can't. Go into people's intentions. وَلِذَلِكَ أُسَامَةَ بْنُ زَيْدٍ رضي الله تعالى رضي الله تعالى عنه أما رضي الله تعالى عنهما May Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said, بَعَثَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger sent us في سَرِيَّةٍ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He sent us on an expedition. I mean, he sent us on somewhere. 
حرقات من جهينة and حرقات is a نسبة إلى حرقة it's an attribution to حرقة and his name is جهيش بن عامر بن ثعلبة بن موادعي موادعية فأدرقت رجلا he said I met a man Usama is saying, I met a man whilst on my journey. فَقَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ This man said, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Meaning, this is a battle. Usama ibn Zayd was in the battle. The man, Usama said, I caught him. He was killing a lot of people. And when I caught this man, who was killing so many people, as soon as I came to him and I was close to him, the man said, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Usama never listened. He sliced his throat and he killed him. Then he said, I told the Prophet what happened. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ The Messenger said, أَقَالَ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَقَتَلْتَهُ Did he say, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and then you killed him? قَالَ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Usama said, I said, Messenger of Allah, إِنَّمَا قَالَهَا خَوْفًا مِنَ السِّلَاحِ He said it because he was scared of the sword. The Messenger then said to him, أَفَلَا شَقَقْتَ عَنْ قَلْبِ حَتَّى تَعْلَمَ أَقَالَهَا أَمْ لَا Why didn't you open his chest? Why did you not open his chest? So you can know if he said this and he meant it or if he didn't mean it. Why didn't you open his chest? In other words, you wouldn't know. Judge him by his apparent. When he kept repeating this and he kept repeating it until Usama ibn Zayd said حَتَّى تَمَنَّيْتُ أَنِّي أَسْلَمْتُ يَوْمَئِ the Prophet was repeating this so many times. He kept saying to him, "Aqala la ilaha illallah wa qataltahu." Did he say "La ilaha illallah"? You killed him. Did you? He kept repeating that, and he kept repeating to him, "What would you do the day of judgment if La ilaha illallah comes to you and you've just killed the person who is saying it? What would you do the day of judgment?" Osama said that the Prophet was repeating it so many times. I wish until I said to myself. I never was a Muslim before that day. I mean, I just came to Islam. قَالَ فَقَالَ سَعَدٌ وَأَنَا وَاللَّهِ لَا أَقْتُلُ مُسْلِمًا حَتَّى يَقْتُلَهُ ذُو الْبُطَيْنِ Sa'ad, he, when the fitna of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah kicked off. And what happened? People were fighting, right? So people came to Sa'ad and they said to him, why don't you fight? And he said, Wallahi, uh, la uqatil, I'm not going to fight. Any Muslim, until Usama ibn Zayd killed, fights with him. Usama is my guideline today. I'm behind him. Lidharika, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Usama grew up together, right? Did they not? They grew up together. Ali ibn Abi Talib and Usama grew up together. Um, When Ali ibn Abi Talib, sorry, Ali and Zayd grew up together, sorry. Usama and Hassan and Hussein grew up together. Usama, when the fitna of Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah happened, Ali got hurt by Usama's dealings. Why were you not on our side? Why, were you, why, 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 why didn't you take a position? Ali was saying that. And Ali said to him, I sent him something. He said to him, Ali, Ali ibn Abi Talib was sending gift to people, but he didn't send it to Osama. Hassan Hussein took it privately, they gave it to Osama. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, sorry, Osama said to Ali, Wallahi by Allah, if you went into the cheek of a lion, into the mouth of a lion, and you went in his cheek, I would go in there with you. Meaning everywhere you go, I'll go with you, Ali. You know I'm behind you. But I'm not going to fight and kill a Muslim. I'm not going to spill a blood of a Muslim. Meaning, I learned it from the Messenger Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Are you going to kill him after he said La ilaha illallah? Meaning, the Sahaba learned a big lesson. He learned a big lesson from that. Then they said to Sa'ad, and the man said to Sa'ad, Didn't Allah say, وَقَاتِلُهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَةٌ وَيَكُونَ الدِّينُ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ didn't Allah say fight until there is no fitna and the whole religion is for Allah? Didn't Allah say fight until there's no fitna anymore? I mean the fitna here means no shirk. Fitna here means shirk. 
Didn't Allah say fight until there is no shirk and the whole religion is for him? Didn't Allah say that? Sa'ad responded by saying We fought until there was no fitna You and your followers You're only fighting to bring about fitna When we were with the messenger We fought Until there was no, long, there was no fitna You guys are fighting to bring about fitna But the point of this story is that the Prophet ﷺ told Osama to judge people by the apparent. And many people you find and say, nah, I don't think he did it for that reason. I really don't think he did that for that reason. Who told you what he did, what was his intentions and why he did it? You shouldn't. Al-Qa'idah to Sadis wal Arba'un. Where just the same way when a person is criticized, he's criticized based on he. He's based upon what he does from the apparent. The same way if a person says something, you know. We judge them by what's apparent. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. It's all from the apparent. Al Qaeda to Sadisa wal Arba'ud. The 46th Qaeda. And now you have the Run and Muslimin and Mubdilat in Fitan. Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they warn the Muslims from the trials and tribulation that misguide. Because there are some fitna that are not, they're not misguiding, like your children. Your children, fitna. Your children and your wealth is a fitna, right? Is it not? Is it not? It is a fitna, but it's not mudillat al fitna. Ridalika Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to say, when you seek refuge in Allah from fitna, say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min mudillat al fitna. Don't just say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al fitna. Because you say, your children are fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Allah says, أحسب الناس do the people believe and you تركوا that they will be left and يقول آمنا that they would that they would say I believe وهم لا يفتنون and they're not going to be tested. Do the people actually believe that they're going to come and say Oh Allah we believe you we are believers. And they would just be left like that, not be tested? No, you will be tested. You will be trialed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So since you're going to be tested, they are, they, are, they are ones who warn you from those trials and tribulations. How to stay away from them. Allah tests his creation. Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his... Al-Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih, min hadith al-Hudayfat ibn al-Yaman, that the Prophet said, تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ عَلَى الْقُلُوبِ بِكَعَرْضِ الْحَصِيرِ عُودًا عُودًا فَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أُشْرِبَهَا نُكِتَتْ فِيهِ نُكْتَةٌ سَوْدَاء وَأَيُّ قَلْبٍ أَنْكَرَهَا نُكِتَتْ فِيهِ نُكْتَةٌ بَيْضَاء حَتَّى تَعُودَ الْقُلُوبُ عَلَى قَلْبَيْنِ قَلْبٍ أَسْوَدَ مُرْبَادًا كَالْكُوزِ مُجَخِّيًا لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا إلا ما أشرب من هواه وقلب أبيض فلا تضر فتنة ما دامت السماوات والأرض the Prophet said that the fitna will be placed and it will be thrown at the heart. So the fitna will be thrown at you like that. And the people, the Prophet told us, Ali said that fitna has been thrown at the people and it keeps coming, like, he's been thrown at it. Any heart that soaks that in, takes that in, it will turn into a black dot. And any heart that rejects that fitna, and doesn't allow it to slip into his heart, what happens? It will turn into a white dot. Until the Prophet ﷺ says, the hearts turn into two things then. So the fitna falls at the people, the people are two types. Some people don't even open their hearts for the fitna. They don't even entertain the idea of the fitna. Uh, they don't. They block it off, they close it and they leave it and they walk away from it. And those people, their hearts are going to turn white. Every time they do that, one white dot. Another person on the other hand, what does he do? It turns into a black dot, a black dot, a black dot, black, 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 until his heart becomes all black. That's what the Prophet said. Hatta ta'ud al qulub ala qalbain. The Prophet said the hearts turn into two hearts, one of, one of two hearts. The first one is qalbin aswad al murbat. The first one is a black heart. So this heart becomes, it goes tainted. And it becomes like 
like a cup upside down. Now, if you get a cup and you try to pour water into it, you won't take it. This person becomes upside down. This person wouldn't accept the good and he can't reject the evil anymore. He doesn't know good from bad anymore. He doesn't know what's good and he doesn't know what's bad. Except that which goes into his heart. And another heart, abyaba, another heart which is so white. Fala fitna. Fitna cannot harm him. Ma damati samawat wal ard. As long as the samawat and the ard exist. So some people are like that. So the person has to make sure that they stay away from the fitna. What are the fitnas that before the people? There are two types, right? Fitna to shubuhat and fitna to shahawat, right? Fitna to shahawat is the one Allah says in the Quran, Ya Dawudu inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ardi fahkum bayna al-nasi bil haqq wa la tattabi illawa fayudillaka an sabili Allah inna al-ladhina yadilluna an sabili Allah ilahum a'thabun shadidun bima nasu yawm al-hisab the first one is called fitna shubuhat. Shubuhat means that the person is full of desires. It means shubuhat, sorry, doubt. Shubuhat is the person has the fitna of doubt. In other words, the person's insight is very weak and his knowledge. Two things are basically, anyone who has shubuhat is two things. Really, the summary of shubuhat comes from, it stems from two things. The person has qillatul basiratul ilm. The person has little insight and knowledge. And the second thing is that it's cupped with, it's coupled with, it's added up with fasadul qast. This person has a bad intention, bad motive. You see? So with those two, this person can't really, and this is where the innovators, the kuffar, the munafiqeen, all of them, they enter here. They have shubuhat, doubts. The reason why that doubt entered into, the, into them is again ba'ful basirati wa qillatil ilm. There's lack of knowledge and there's lack of insight. And there also is fasadul qasdi, bad motive and intention. The second one is called fitna to shahawat, desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he summarized the two fitness in one verse. He says, كَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ كَانُوا أَشَدَّ مِنْكُمْ قُوَّةً وَأَكْثَرَ أَمْوَالًا وَأَوْلَادًا وَأَكْثَرَ أَمْوَالًا وَأَوْلَادًا فَاسْتَمْتَعُوا بِخَلَاقِهِمْ فَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِخَلَاقِكُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he say? He says to them, كَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Those who came before you, كَانُوا أَشَدَّ مِنْكُمْ قُوَّةً They had more strength than you guys. وَأَكْثَرَ أَمْوَالًا And they had more wealth. And they had more children. فَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ Enjoy بِخَلَاقِهِمْ فَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِخَلَاقِكُمْ That is what? That's shahwat. It's the dunya, money, children and everything. وَخُذْتُمْ كَالَّذِي خَاضُوا is what? And you, you, you indulged into matters like they indulged is fitna to ash-shubuhat, doubts. And both of those are in that verse. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimullah, he speaks about this very, in very great details in his kitab, Iratatul Lahfan fi Masaid al-Shaytan. And I advise you guys to go and try to read it. Al-Qa'idatu al-Sabi'atu al arbaun The 47th Qa'idah. أنهم يقررون أن من أبرز علامات أهل البدع أهل السنة والجماعة they establish and they affirm that from the greatest forms or the greatest signs of the innovators is what? One of the great signs of the innovators is التلون والتنقل that they are consistently huh? they are consistently trans trans Versing from one thing to another. They're always just moving from one stage to another. They're not consistent upon one thing. They have what is known as talawun. What's that animal that when it goes on a, a particular tree, its color changes? 
a chameleon, right? That's how they are. Wherever they are, they're just what those people are. If they go to Saudi Arabia, they study they with the people of ulama of Saudi Arabia, they want to talk like them, they act like them. When they come to the West, they put their monkey suits on and they run around and they, you know, when they are in other countries, they, every place they go to, they act like those people. They, they don't have it. That's how they are. And he, he goes on to say, وَأَنَّهُمْ قَلَّ مَا يُوَفَّقُونَ لِلتَّوْبَةِ وَأَنَّهُمْ قَلَّ مَا يُوَفَّقُونَ لِلتَّوْبَةِ And little are they able to even repent. Because they're not upon a path. They're just all over the place. So little does a mubtadi actually repent. Little. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَقَالَتْ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَجَهَ النَّهَارِ Allah also says, Allah also says, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ بِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِهِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِّنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ That's Hussari, right? Allah says in this ayah, وَقَالَ الطَّائِفَةٌ A group said, مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ From the people of the scriptures, آمِنُوا believe بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ Believe in that which has been sent on you. عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا From the believers. Allah says a group of the people of the scripture, أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ They say, آمِنُوا believe بِالَّذِي أُنزِلَ Believe in basically become Muslims. وَجْهَ النَّهَارِ And in the evening and daytime now, so believe, become believers in the daytime and in the evening وَكْفُرُوا آخِرَهُ Disbelieve in Allah لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ The reason we're going to do this is so that the Muslims can repent so they can apostate like us as well and this is a tactic that they always do they will say let's become Muslims and then let's leave Islam it will, it will make many people doubt Islam now you know what Wallahi subhanallah this is not really they will say look I've been a Muslim with you guys for so long man for four months Four years I was a Muslim, I went around the world, I've been studying with the big scholars. All this time he wanted to do this. I've apostated now. Allah told us already this, man. You live in Islam is... Uh, sorry man, you're losing out, brother. That's all you've done to yourself. Sah. So this is something. This, look at this personality which they have, which is a talawun wa tanakul. They can't be one thing. They have to move from one to another. That's how they are, Ahlul Bida. Wherever you find them. But they smart it out. You know what they say? That was when I was, now I'm wise, alhamdulillah. No, you're not wise. You just can't be upon one path. You're mutalawwin. What did the Salaf say? Iyaka wa talawwuna fi inna deen Allahi wahid. Stop this talawwun changing about or too much. The religion of Allah is only one. Why do you keep changing for? Why do you keep, why do you keep changing for? What did the Salaf say? ibn al-Yaman, he said, Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said a very powerful statement. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Sheikh didn't bring it here. Hudayfa said, one of the greatest evils, he says, an tunkira ma kunta ta'arifuhu, 
that you reject what you yesterday used to affirm. Yesterday, something that you used to reject today, you're, 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 you're affirming it. And to, to affirm today something you used to reject yesterday. Yesterday you were staunch individual against some principles and now you've watered your belief down. You've watered yourself down. This is not wisdom. La wallah is it hikmah that you've become. It's not. You are just mutalawin. That's what you really are. Are you with me? And brothers, don't get fooled by these titles. I've become wise. I've matured now. Alhamdulillah. It's not maturity you see in this person. It is a talawun. They can't be consistent upon a path. But they'll beautify it to you. Just like the alcoholic. Just, it will call his alcohol juice. They'll give it a nice name. And the one who sells drugs will call it food. This is how it is. Nice names that the nafs is inclined to. So he'll use the word hikmah. Wisdom. I've grown out of that. That's immature. That's when I was more very immature. So, that's what he'll say. No, it's not. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, what did he say? فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِ مَيْهِ زَيْغُ مَا مَعْنَا زَيْغُ What about the ayah? فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ Allah turned their hearts. Their hearts are not consistent upon one thing. Their hearts are deviated. It's crooked. That's what they are. And their hearts are sick. As Allah said in the Quran, فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا their heart has, has an illness in it. And Allah increased them in illness, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why they keep changing is because they are becoming more deviated. They're more deviated. As Allah said in the Quran, وَأَقَسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ جَهْدَ أَيْمَانِهِمْ لَإِنْ جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهَا قُلْ إِنَّمَا الْآيَاتُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ وَمَا يُشْعِرُكُمْ أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاءَتْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ وَنَذَرُهُمْ فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah says, وَأَقْسَمُوا بِاللَّهِ They swore by Allah. They made an oath. لَإِنْ جَاءَتْهُمْ آيَةٌ لَا يُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهَا they made an oath and a covenant that if the verses of Allah comes to them that they're going to believe, قُلْ say to them, Muhammad, إِنَّمَا الْآيَةُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ The verses are with Allah. وَمَا يُشْعِرُكُمْ أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاءَتْ إِذَا جَاءَتْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ And what makes you think and feel أَنَّهَا إِذَا جَاءَتْ If they if it comes, that they might not believe. Allah says, وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ We might even come with those signs and they might not believe. Allah says, وَنُقَلِّبُ We have turned أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ Their hearts وَأَبْصَارَهُمْ and their eyes. Their hearts are upside down. It's like a cup, you pour it upside down, cup, you're pouring water in it. It won't go in there. And their eyes can't see the truth. They can't see it. Like they haven't believed in it in the first time. And they're just dwelling into their transgression. So this shows that the person should be consistent and be steadfast upon their way and not to change and jump from one thing to another. As for the fact that repentance is closed from them, is the Prophet Sallallahu statement which is in Allah in Allah Tajaza in Allah Tajara Tawba Ta Sahiba Bidati. Allah has kind of blocked repentance from the innovator, the one who innovates in the religion. The reason why he won't repent is not because the doors of repentance are actually locked that he can't. It just means that he won't even repent. He doesn't think there's a need to repent, right? He believes what he's doing is getting closer to Allah by it. Because the one who's drinking alcohol knows what he's doing is wrong, so he will repent. Whereas the one who's innovating actually believes what he's doing is getting closer, he's, get, he's getting him closer to Allah, right? So he's an innovator, he won't repent. He, lo he won't leave his ways. He won't leave his, he won't leave his ways. <clears throat> but if they repent, Allah will accept their repentance. Allah will accept their repentance, if they do repent. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَئِكَ أُولَئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا فَأُولَئِكَ أَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَنَا التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ Those who hide مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ They hide the clear-cut verses that have been sent down. 
wal huda and they also hide their guidance min ba'di after ma bayyanahu after we have brought it clear to the people we brought it clear to the people fil kitab in the book they want to hide it ulaika those ones yal'anuhum allah allah curses them wa yal'anuhum al-la'inuna and the ones who curse will also curse them illa alladhina tabu except those who repent wa aslahu and they rectify their situation wa bayyanu and they also clarify their mistakes that they previously did so an innovator's repentance is not accepted unless he what? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا He repents. وَأَصْلَحُ He needs to rectify what he did. And he also needs to clarify to the people. He can't just say, oh, I repented in my bedroom. So many people are following you. You have to go out there and tell the people, what I was calling to all those years is wrong. I no longer feel that. And I don't, no longer believe in it. He has to come out. He can't repent in his bedroom. Uh, Allah says specifically what? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَأَصْلَحُوا وَبَيَّنُوا بَيَّنُوا بَيَّنُوا He has to clarify. He has to clarify. Then Allah says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَتُوبُوا عَلَيْهِمْ Those ones, I take their repentance from them. وَأَنَا التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَا التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ And if they do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will inshallah make them steadfast. Allah says in another ayah, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ فَعَلُوا مَا يُعَظُونَ بِي لَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُمْ وَشَدَّ تَتْبِيتًا وَإِذَا لَاتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ لَدُنَّا أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا وَلَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ صِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا Allah says, and if they do what they are told to do, they follow the reminders of Allah, and they follow those steps as they are, لَكَانَ خَيَرًا لَهُمْ That would be good for them. وَأَشَدَّ تَثْبِيتًا And that would be a reason for them to be steadfast, and not to be consistently jumping from one view to another. وَإِذَا لَاتَيْنَاهُمْ مِنْ لَدُنَّا أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah then says, from us, we will give to them a great reward. وَلَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ And we will guide them سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا A straight path. Allah said that subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will get a lot of reward. And Allah will also make them what? Steadfast. الْقَاعِدَةُ الثَّامِنَةُ وَالْأَرْبَعُونَ The 48th principle. The 48th principle. إِنَّ مِنْ مَنَاهِجِهِمُ التَّعَامُلَ مَعَ الْخَلْقِ بِالصِّدْقِ وَالْأَمَانَةِ وَالْنُصْحِ The Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah the way that they deal with the people, their methodology in dealing with the people is based upon truthfulness. They, they're very truthful. They don't lie about people. They're very truthful. And they also are trustworthy. al amana they can be entrusted with anything. One nush and they are sincere people. They are sincere advisors. When they are dealing with the people, they are sincere advisors. They don't cheat the people. They don't lie to the people. They don't fool the people. And these people can be of any faith and any religion. If it's a Christian, a Jew, whatever it may be, they don't lie about people. And they won't quote what they haven't said. And wh whoever entrusts them with anything, they come out with it as it is. That's a characteristic that Ahlul Sunnah are very well known for. قَالَ Allah Ta'ala, Allah says, وَيَقُولُونَ طَاعَةٌ فَإِذَا بَرَزُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكَ بَيَّةَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِي تَقُولُونَ وَيَقُولُونَ طَاعَةٌ فَإِذَا بَرَزُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكَ بَيَّةَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْهُمْ غَيْرَ الَّذِي تَقُولُ وَاللَّهُ يَكْتُبُ مَا يُبَيِّتُونَ فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا 